So this is day three after my ACL reconstruction. Real quick, let me catch you up on what's been happening between uh, my last video and now. So I did my first video the day of my surgery, that evening. And I knew that this day two was going to be really hard because I knew my uh, painkillers and my nerve blockers that they had given me in my knee were going to start to wear out. And so I was anticipating it being a rough day. Um, what I did not anticipate is that it was going to be a rough day. And like I said in my first video, I was continuously staying on a really good schedule with my pain medicine in anticipation of this second day when those nerve blockers wore off. I slept most of the afternoon of the second day. Like I said, I was taking my pain medication and it pretty much knocks me out. I mean, it makes me, it takes about, the pain medicine that they have me on takes me, it takes about 40 minutes for it to kick in, for you to feel any relief from the pain. And um, after that, it makes you feel, or it makes me feel very tired and very loopy. And I'm really not comfortable with that feeling, but um, I'm less comfortable with having the throbbing pain in my knee. I kind of, I was trying to describe the pain to my husband and you know when you hit your elbow or you hit your knee against something really hard and that mo and just in that moment just that pain how it just kind of vibrates and kind of just expands that initial blow you know to an elbow or to a knee the pain after the ACL surgery is like that initial blow but of course, you know, once you grab your elbow and you take a deep, couple deep breaths after you hit it, it subsides. Well, this blow doesn't subside. It's, <laughs> it's just there. So uh, I wasn't really interested in eating because I was tired and I was on the pain medications. I had slept all day long. I really hadn't eaten. And my husband came in and we just kind of talked a little bit. And of course the dreaded, I have to go to the bathroom, which I've gone over with you before about what a nuisance it is um, to get to the bathroom. It does get better by the way. So I got up and went to the bathroom and when I got to the bathroom, it's about, I timed it out. It's three steps. It's three crutches steps to the bathroom with a little maneuvering of the hip and, and getting in the bathroom. So luckily for me, the bathroom, I mean, I can put both hands on either side of the walls. So, so my husband just stepped out of the room for a minute and he heard a like that. He comes into the bathroom and yes, me like Elvis, I had completely passed out. So he's waking me up. He's trying to get me awake and he has both of his hands on the side of my face and he's yelling at me. He says, Terry, wake up. My husband calls me Tootie. He's always called me that. If he calls me by my real name, I am in big trouble. So when I first came to, my first thought was, I just had surgery. Why is he talking to me like that? Why is he yelling at me? And then he, he got out. You passed out. So, um, I was a little bit of, so I had a little bit of a panic. So I was like, whoa, that happened fast. And, you know, usually you get lightheaded and you can sit down and you can take deep breaths or put your head, you know, between your knees and you can regain, you know, this was just like that. So I don't know how he got me back to the bed. I have no idea. Um, once I got back to the bed, um, he laid me down flat and he raised my legs up. And then I started to throw up. And my husband had kept a bucket beside me ever since I got home. And I was always joking with him. I'm like, I'm not going to need that. But my husband hates throw up he doesn't want to have to mess with it at all. So 
basically the second day I slept all day. I was in pain. I woke up. I didn't eat a lot and I was on pain medicines and I got up too quick and I went to the bathroom and I passed out. And then once I got back to the bed, I started throwing up. I would not recommend this for anybody. Um, so basically my husband and my daughter are like the toilet Nazis now. If I have to get up and go anywhere, they're like reading me all the rules. Okay, you have to go slow, which you do have to go slow. You need to lower your legs down. You need to sit up. You need to turn around, put your leg on the ground, take your time. So the third day, which was yesterday, um, was a little bit better. I decided not to take my pain medication because I just, I don't like how it feels. So I have ibuprofen here and I took ibuprofen uh, all day yesterday and it, it did what it was supposed to do and I wasn't in a lot of pain. So I think I'm just going to stick with that. Um, I don't like how the pain meds make me feel. I love how they take away the pain, but I don't like how they make me feel. They make me feel like, a, it makes me feel like a damp, soggy, cold wash rag that your kids have left in the shower for a week and you find it. That's just how it makes you feel. It makes you feel icky. I had my first physical therapy appointment. It was just a post-op. I knew that basically they were going to redo my dressings and they were probably going to have me bend this knee. I was more, I had more anxiety about this appointment than I did going in and having the surgery. I knew they were going to make me bend this knee. And I know a lot of it is, you know, psychological because I knew they were going to ask me to do things. And I knew that my brain is in this mode of we need to protect the knee. No, we're not going to do that. So um, I went in for the physical therapy appointment and they did change out my bandages. I took my nausea medicine for this one reason. I've been watching videos on YouTube, which are very helpful. Thank you very much if you've ever done that. It's really, really great information. And they would film their dressings being changed or their first, you know, movements of the knee and their first um, physical therapy session. And it just made me sick to my stomach. So, and that was a lot of my anxiety. I was like, I'm going to get sick to my stomach. They're going to make me bend this knee and I'm going to throw up. So she took all, she took my brace off, which felt awesome. And she unwrapped me. And then she went about replacing the little strips that they have over, I, I want to say incisions. I don't know if they're incisions or not. They're really small. So, uh, when she started pulling those off and you know how we tell our kids, you know, just let me rip it off, <laughs> you know, just let me rip off a band aid. you know, to go by. I wish she would have done it that way, but she had to go slow and I understand how she had to go slow, but also know that I have not shaved my legs in like six days. So when you're pulling off, um, that surgical tape, yeah, you're, you're giving me a little mini wax. So it. I got sick to my stomach, basically. I took my nausea pill and relaxed a little bit. They did do the exercises. They checked my extension, which um, was, she said, one degree short of zero, which is zero is where you want to be. But um, she was such a nice lady. No, really, she really was nice. But she, um, she put a little bit of pressure on my knee and got it to zero, so... Okay, that's an accomplishment. I'll take it, whether she had to push it or not. So my um, extension was good. Now, when we started to bring my foot up, what they do is they have you lay out and they want you to scoot your um, heel to see how far you can bend your knee. What they do is basically they give you, try it nine times because that's your warm up and then they're gonna measure it on your 10th time. And I measured at 76 degrees, which I guess that's good. I mean, in a perfect world, it would have been 90, but I know that, you know, that it takes time. And hopefully by the end of next week, with me doing all my 
exercises twice daily at home and going to physical therapy two times next week. Maybe I'll get it to 90. I don't know why I was so um, upset about the 76. I mean, I know it's a slow process. Um, I was happy about the zero. So we'll just go with the zero extension. Yay, nailed it. So that was my day. I came home and my daughter has opening night tonight for a chorus line. She is in a chorus line at our local theater and I'm missing it and it makes me very sad, but I really was not in any shape <laughs> to, um, to go tonight. I was going to, Jason is with her right now. My husband is with her at opening night and I was going to um, do my exercises and let, and kind of film it, which I'm still going to do, but all the instructions and the paper for my exercises are in the car and I'm kind of weird about that. I have to have it in front of me <laughs> and read it and, and just go through it. I have to have that. I don't want to wing it. I mean, I could wing it, but to, to probably, we better not wing it. For this journey but one thing I did do today was once you know I mentioned Jason and my daughter are like crazy when I get up they're like hey 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 where are you going where are you going where are you going are you gonna pass out are you gonna fall over or you got it you got it got it so they're at the show right now I was laying here and just decided I cannot take it one more minute with my hair being dirty now I haven't been able to get into the full shower I haven't been cleared for that because I do have an incision that was bleeding today and I have not been cleared for that I've been doing extensive sponge baths um, because it just makes me feel better but I had not my hair I have to wash my hair every day I mean, I have extremely oily hair. So last night I had my husband buy some of that dry shampoo just so I could spray it in my hair. I ended up wearing a hat anyway, it was, you know, to physical therapy. But I had him get me some and I tried it. I watched the Brad Mondo uh, videos on how to properly do dry shampoo. And I gotta tell you, I hate dry shampoo. Yes, it does take away the oil, but it, just makes your hair feel like crap. I mean, it makes it look good, but if I am grossed out by doing this to my hair, then just, it's not worth it. So the, anyway, so Jason and Lorelai are at the show tonight and James is staying with me. And James is my son, he's really laid back. You know, um, even when I had all the fainting, he just kind of paced and was very calm and my daughter was in tears. I'm gonna have to start saving up for therapy for her now because I think I've traumatized her. But he's very easygoing, you know, he doesn't freak out. So knowing James was here with me, I told James, I said, I need you to go get me a chair and I need you to go get me a towel and some shampoo and conditioner and knowing that I can now start to put a little bit of weight on this leg, not a lot. Um, I just kind of balanced myself with the majority of my weight on my good leg and um, had a little bit of just kind of for it to be balanced on my other leg. And I stood at the kitchen sink and I washed my hair and I feel fabulous. Never again will I have to go. I mean, that was, that was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That was three days without washing my hair. I mean, you could have like gone like this and just pulled off just, just mega oil. So I feel a little bit better. Um, I'm glad I got my first PT out of the way. I'm glad that my extension is almost at zero. I'd love to claim the zero, but I can't because she did push down on it. Um, I will celebrate the 76 degrees of being able to flex my knee. And I'm going to celebrate having clean hair tonight. So until next time, I have physical therapy in a couple of days. And we'll see what they have for me there and I'll do a video with me doing for the first time at home unsupervised 
my exercises that I'm supposed to do twice daily from now on. There you go, clean hair and all.